Hi friends, greeting from Anamo Laboratories Private Limited. In a pathology laboratory, quality control or quality check is a very common word. And when it comes to quality control, it's always a control serum which comes into the picture. What is a control serum? Control serum is a commercially available a serum sample. Okay, largely they are either in the liquid form or they are in the dry form. Very easy to have a liquid form quality control because in the liquid form they are need to be just a pooling of various samples of the serum and stabilizing it. Either they are in terms of ethylene glycol and antibacterial reagents or some other technology which is a proprietary to various manufacturers. And in such a case, values are assigned on that. But let us see, they are also available in a dry form. What is a dry form? A large mass of control serum or a human serum which is pooled, homogenized and filled into smaller volumes like 5 ml in number of vials. They are then frozen and dried under vacuum and this is what is the process which is called lyophilization in other words this is freeze drying now this freeze dry control sera now they are absolutely same in nature throughout all the vials it may be a lot of around 200,000 vials 1000 vials depending upon the lot and the company now when this control serum is reconstituted like the way it is dried the same way you need to add distilled water to it to get the same volume back if suppose it was 5 ml and dried you add back the 5 ml wire water then it becomes a homogenized control serum it takes a little time to homogenize to a level where the all components get dissolved properly once this is ready now you can use it like a normal serum a normal sample why it is called control serum because every analyte value is known and written down now when you assign a control serum value there are two terms which you remember there is one thing which is called a mean value or the most probable value or there is an acceptable range of that control serum and that range is nothing but mean minus two standard deviation or mean plus two standard deviation now let me explain what is the mean value what is the standard deviation or two or minus two or plus two standard deviation is a simple issue is that when you prepared a control serum you prepared in a large number of vials when this large number of vials have been given to various laboratories to do analysis of various analytes let us for understanding take only one analyte like SDL cholesterol now when you allow let's say 200 vials have been given to 200 different laboratories to do analysis some of the laboratories have done this SDL cholesterol analysis based on precipitating method some of them done with a direct homogeneous method each one the laboratory will repeat it 10 times and report the results to the central laboratory central laboratory will do the data analysis data analysis means they will take all the 200 values based on X method, based on Y method. But 200, add it up, divided by 200, you get a mean value. And mean value is nothing but most probable value which you get. But what about this standard deviation? What about this acceptable range? It's very easy to understand. It looks very complicated, but it's not so. So what you do is, you take an individual value, value number one, minus the mean value. Value number two, minus the mean value so you keep on getting 200 such values now if you take an average of these 200 differences the negative value which is less than the mean value will nullify the positive value but that is not what we want so what do we do is we take the differences of all these values square it up when you square each value becomes a positive value now take the mean of all the differences in the square form and at the end of it take the 
mean of it divide by that 200 number you get a mean and under root it under root why under root it because you have done the square root so you make it under root now what you get is the real difference between each value on an average of 200 okay i hope i could make you understand what is standard deviation this standard deviation gives you an idea a normal gaussian curve is that when you have done the analysis 200 times 60 percent time or 65 percent time your values were falling between mean value minus one standard deviation value and mean value plus one standard deviation value okay now if you want to cover wider range take two standard deviation in minus side and two standard deviation in plus side for example if a value mean value of hdl cholesterol is let's say 50 and standard deviation which you got is of 3 milligram percent okay so 50 minus 2 standard deviation so that means 3 into 2 6 that is 50 minus 6 is 44 and 56 so values between 44 and 56 is acceptable range for this analyte okay now this when you make it 2 standard deviation plus or minus side and fix the value it covers of the 200 times repeat 95 percent values 95 percent time you get the values falling between 44 and 56 milligram percent of sdl which is done in the analysis of that is what is called a mean and acceptable range okay once you understand the mean and acceptable range how these values are assigned i have explained it to you one simple thing, you repeat it 200 times and do mean and SD analysis. So you get, but important is that when you do this analysis, you are assigning the value based on methodology. I said it very clearly is that when you're doing SDL analysis, you can do it either with the precipitating method or you can do it with a direct homogeneous method. So whenever there is a control serum described, it will mention the value based on the method. So you see value assignment, value assignment is either based on the method or sometimes they are based on the analyzer. So various control serum manufacturer, they give both the type of values, values which are based on general values based on precipitating method or method X or Y or Z. So you get the entire one analyte number of methods and your value set is there with the mean value and the acceptable range. So is the case with the second method, but you get analyzer based value, which is Backman Coulter, analyzer Hitachi, analyzer Abbott, analyzer etc. One, two, three, four, number of analytes, number of analyzers. So if you are fitting into the analyzer bracket, you just look at the value in that analyzer because that analyzer has a specific set of reagent analyzer or else if in case your analyzer is not fitting into the range which is provided by this manufacturer of control serum, you take the mean value which is based on general method and suit your reagent methodology based on what is your technical insert which you are using it in. Okay. Now let's come down to accurate or precise. These are my concerns in a laboratory as a technician. Are my results today accurate? So what do I do accurate means what is the value which I am observing today in a patient sample is it accurate which depends on if I run a control serum today in the same setup and if I get the value within the mean value or acceptable range my results are accurate but what about my values tomorrow day after tomorrow or one month later so that's where the picture comes in the precision part precision is nothing but reproducibility if suppose i am doing a control serum lot so and so and my value of sdl is 50 if the same lot i continue using it every day for 30 days in the entire month do my values fall in the same range or do my values fluctuate too much so there is a simple method which is used in this is i plot a curve values that is mean value i draw on an x-axis 
lower side upper side that is 2 hd plus or minus and this side my days and i keep on plotting my values which i get on every day while while i do this analysis of hdl cholesterol on a daily basis and you will certainly see my values today is accurate yesterday it was this much tomorrow this much third day fourth day fifth day fifth day you continuously get if in case your values start falling gradually every day down you need to change the control serum immediately and calibrate your instrument all over again or if your values fluctuating too much you need to standardize some variables in the lab but if your values constantly keep on falling within plus or minus two standard deviation range your every day's results of that particular analyte is worth reporting to the clinician this is what is called a levy jenning chart which every laboratory every instrument has in nowadays okay the most important part what is the stability of this control serum which you are preparing <laughs> as far as liquid stable control serum are concerned they have an expiry once you open the vial use it within certain number of days which is mentioned in the technical insert or a read instruction for reading so is the case with the dry this dry or lyophilized control sera once you add the water and allow it for 15 minutes to dissolve and homogenize it and all that thereafter you must record the date of reconstitution or if they are liquid date of opening and ensure whatever is recommended 3 days or 5 days or 4 days depending upon the company to company or analyte to analyte for example alkaline phosphatase bilirubin they have a limited shelf life once you reconstitute and other analytes are little more stable like calcium or glucose etc so you can use that within that stipulated period and ensure that you get your results all right i hope friends i have been able to explain it to you the composition of this control serum and the type the process of lyophilization that is a freeze drying what is mean value acceptable range how these values are assigned and how do you ensure that your results are accurate or your results are accurate on a daily basis every day in and out like precision and what is the stability of a control serum means i hope this has been useful video to you if you like it subscribe it and if you press the bell icon you will keep on getting more videos like this thank you very much friends